Today, we're going to do a deep dive into Amazon Web Services and see how Amazon makes its money. Amazon is a one-stop shop where you can buy almost anything. It's also the home of Prime Video, a place full of original content and free videos. Back in the day, and yes, I'm old enough to remember, Amazon started by selling books, and with a Kindle, Amazon still dominates the reading market. Even though Amazon is pretty much everywhere in our digital life, the online giant would not exist as we know it today without Amazon Web Services or AWS. Get this, by 2022, AWS averaged 85 billion, and that's billion with a B, in annual revenue. I'll dig deeper into how the company did this a little later in the video, so stick around if you're interested. Before we explore how Amazon AWS makes Amazon profitable, we need to understand what it is and why Amazon might look very, very different without AWS. In the beginning, AWS actually didn't intend on providing cloud computing services to those that needed it. It was, in fact, made as a way to scale its engineering operations. Now, what does that mean? Well, back in the early 2000s, Amazon created a website called Merchant.com. The intent of Merchant.com was to give retailers a way to build their own websites or storefronts to sell their goods. As part of Merchant.com's backend, Amazon began examining its retail computing infrastructure. Now, this initiative, combined with an internal effort to streamline its engineering teams, led to the initial idea of AWS. Back then, an engineering lead called Matt Round had a clear objective. It was to lift the burden on his teams and reduce the time they spent on IT and infrastructure problems. The overall goal was to use the free time they'd gain to focus more on software development. Makes sense, right? It would still be a few years before the AWP S we know today would begin to take shape. What really kick-started the beginnings of AWS happened when two employees, Chris Pinkman and Benjamin Black, presented the idea of selling access to its cloud computing infrastructure to the public. The pair eventually got the green light to pursue the idea. Thumbs up. And with that, the first infrastructure as a service, or IaaS, from Amazon was born. It became available for public use in 2004 with the name of Simple Q Service, or SQS. And SQS is a fully managed message queue for microservices, distributed services, and serverless applications. These aren't the same messages you'd send to your friends or family messaging, in SQS is program-to-program -program communication. SQS is still in use today and has customers such as NASA, BMW, and Capital One. Where exactly did things go from here? Well, within the next couple of years, Amazon's cloud computing infrastructure and services really began to take shape. In 2006, Amazon launched Amazon S3 Cloud Storage and Elastic Cloud Computing, also known as EC2. These two products help developers focus on innovation and working with data instead of worrying about where the data will be stored or how it will be accessed. Fast forward to 2010, and Amazon knew it had a winner on its hands with AWS. Amazon migrated its retail sites to AWS and began to attract many big names to its IaaS offerings. For example, in 2012, Netflix migrated 100% of its infrastructure needs to, you guessed it, AWS. It was also around this time that Amazon decided to separate AWS's financial statements from its retail operations. And this is an important milestone, as Amazon could now count AWS's revenue independently and see just how profitable it could be, but also hiding this profitability a little bit from the general public and therefore they gained quite a big advantage over their competitors. 
Despite being the most recognizable name in online shopping, Amazon's retail operation, while bringing in the most revenue, hasn't always been profitable. As recently as 2022, Amazon saw an overall loss of 2.7 billion. AWS, on the other hand, has shown remarkable profitability year over year. In 2016, AWS accounted for 56% of Amazon's profits, marking the first time it was more profitable than Amazon's traditional retail business. At the same time, Amazon's stock value increased 42%. AWS continues to grow and show increases in profitability and operating income. In um, 2022, AWS sales increased by 29% compared to the previous year, with AWS accounting for 22 billion of Amazon's total operating income. The most recent annual report showed AWS accounted for 80 billion or 16% of Amazon's total 514 billion revenue and made up 24 billion of Amazon's operating income. This means 65% of all Amazon profits come from AWS. Simply put, AWS is the number one profit driver for Amazon. And here's the thing, its growth doesn't appear to be slowing down. CEO Annie Jassy still considers AWS to be the early adoption curve for consumers and still in its infancy of its evolution. Currently, AWS owns a 31% market share of all cloud computing companies. Microsoft is a distant second at 24%. AWS will continue to be Amazon's number one profit driver for the foreseeable future. And although Amazon's advertising division has shown exponential growth in recent years and has the potential to eventually replace AWS as Amazon's cash cow, but that's a topic for another video. And if you'd like me to dive into that, please leave a comment below. If you found this video interesting, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. You'll know the moment we upload more content like this in your application. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.